Well, good evening, everyone. And welcome to our midweek Lenten worship service. It's good to see you who are here in person and good to also know that there are many of you who are joining us uh, online uh, at home or watching perhaps later on a recorded service. Uh, Good to be together as we celebrate the season of Lent, remembering our sins and our God who loved us even still and sent his son Jesus to die for those sins. Uh, We are in this series during the Lenten midweek services called Witnesses to Christ. You can see it on the cover of your worship folder. And each time we are together, we will focus on one of the people that John presents to us from his gospel that was a witness to Jesus on his road to the cross. So today we'll look at Mary, the sister of Lazarus and Martha, who anointed Jesus with that perfume and then wiped his feet with her hair. Some great lessons for us. I can't wait to share with you as we dig into the Word together. Just two things I want to remind you of, uh, announcement-wise. Thanks to all of you who have already taken our member voice survey. So grateful for those of you who have uh, found those 12 minutes or so to take that survey. Uh, But we've decided to extend the the deadline just one more weekend. So Monday now will be the deadline to take that survey. So if you still haven't gotten online at faithfoxvalley.org backslash member survey and taken that, I'd really appreciate it if you would find time to do so. We really want to hear your opinions and your thoughts uh, because you are an important part of our congregation. And I've been told to say that we really need more participation from 18 to 34-year-olds and dudes. So guys, come on, step up. We need you to get online and we need to hear your voice too. So if you wouldn't mind doing that, that would be awesome. And then uh, confirmation students, immediately after the service, you want to head down to the fellowship hall. I have some papers laid out there for you on the table. Grab one of those and I'll be with you as soon as I can. All that being said, let's worship our amazing God tonight as we begin with When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Would you please stand if you're able? Our opening hymn is titled When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. This is found in Lutheran Service Book 425. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. As we continue our Lenten journey, we see the contrast between Mary and Judas. The contrast between generosity and greed. The contrast between giving and getting. The contrast between joy and jealousy. Mary points us to the joys of giving. Mary points us to the joys of Jesus. Now, while we would like to think of ourselves as generous, joyful, and giving, we admit that our lives do not live up to the perfect standard God expects. Still, our Heavenly Father invites us to return to Him, confessing our shortcomings and sins. Heavenly Father, we confess that we have committed sins of greed, jealousy, and selfishness. We have sinned against you and our neighbor by things done and things left undone. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Forgive us, renew us by the joy of your salvation, and lead us toward a life of generosity. Amen. And now the best news you will ever hear. Almighty God, in his generous mercy, has given his Son to die and rise for you. On account of Jesus' death on the cross and resurrection from the grave, God has forgiven us all. As one of your called and ordained servants of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. We are generously forgiven and joyfully restored. One of my favorite psalms is Psalm 100. It's a psalm of joy over all that God has given us and done for us. So as we responsibly read this psalm together, it's okay to smile just a little bit. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our next hymn is titled, Yet Not I, But Through Christ in Me. What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. There is no more from heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love.
against in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. now we turn to God's powerful Word, and it is amazing how much of the Bible talks to us about how much more important it is to give than it is to get. Our texts speak today about the power of giving in our lives and the danger of always needing to get. First from Proverbs chapter 11. One man gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. People curse the man who hoards grain, but blessing crowns him who is willing to sell. He who seeks seeks good finds goodwill, but evil comes to him who searches for it. Whoever trusts in his riches will fall, but the righteous will thrive like a green leaf. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now St. Paul speaks to us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, He has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Now, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us, Your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. And this too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now please stand for the verse and reading of the Holy Gospel. Gospel according to St. John, the twelfth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here, a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. Now, he did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. 
It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came, not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well. For on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and putting their faith in him. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The text for the time and the word this evening is the gospel lesson we heard, the beautiful story of Mary and the contrast of Judas. I want to start as I talk about Mary's great gift of giving. I want to talk about a gal whose name is Mary Kondo. Mary Kondo has written four amazing books which collectively have sold over 30 million copies. They've been translated into Japanese and Korean and Chinese and French and German and English and more. Her most popular book, Mary Kondo's book called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, The Art of Decluttering and Organizing, this book has been published in more than 30 countries. It was a bestseller in Japan and Europe and the United States. And get this, in 2020, Marie Kondo was listed as one of Time's 100 most influential people in the world. Why? Because Mary Kondo struck gold realizing that people today are surrounded by so much complexity and clutter, right? So much stuff. I love the story of the dad who was teaching his young little four-year-old daughter to say the Lord's Prayer. They started working at it line by line, and finally the little girl was ready to go solo. So the dad listened with pride as she carefully enunciated each word right up to the end of the prayer when she said, and lead us not into temptation and deliver us from email." Yes, Marie Kondo would say, deliver us from email and from complexity and from clutter and from the compulsive need we have to get more stuff. Now, Marie Kondo's brilliant method of organizing consisted of gathering all of your belongings one category at a time and then keeping only those things that bring what she called sparks of joy. The Japanese word for this was tokimeku, sparks of joy. Whatever it is that makes your heart flutter, whatever it is that brings a a little spark of joy to your heart, keep that. Whatever doesn't, she said, give it away. Tokimeku, sparks of joy that can come into our lives by decluttering, by simplifying. Well, this Lent, we tonight are going to meet and witness, play witness to the woman that Mary Kondo probably loves more than any other, Mary, the queen of Tokimeku, of sparks of joy. How does Mary do it? How does Mary help us experience this tokimeku sparks of joy? Well, she does it by replacing get with give. It sounds so simple, but this is exactly what Mary did in our text tonight. Replace get with give. Because Mary knows that get only clutters things. Get only confuses things. Get only makes us miserable. Get ahead. Get back. Get even. Get more. And whatever you do, get revenge. Mary replaces all of that get with give. Mary gives freely. Mary gives extraordinarily, extravagantly. And Mary gives joyfully. 
So as we move through the message today, I'd like to ask you this. Are you stuck in a little bit of an emotional rut in these crazy days? Still in the winter blues a little bit? Have you lost a little zest and zeal for life and the living of it? You ever feel just tired, like right from the moment when you wake up? You ever wonder what's going to happen in this crazy day that you're living, if anything good can come from it? Well, if you're there, you know what you need? You need a little tokimeku. You need a little spark of joy in your life. And I think Mary would say, maybe you need to replace get with give. So let's look at the context of this story, this beautiful story. In the chapter right before us, in John chapter 11, Jesus has this amazing experience with Lazarus. His best friend dies and has been buried for four days and is in the tomb and is really, really dead. And Jesus shows up and stands outside the tomb and he weeps for his loss. And he weeps at the grief of the people that surround him. But then he does something amazing. He turns to the tomb and he shouts, Lazarus, come out! And Lazarus walks out of the tomb with a shroud still around him, wrapped around him like an old cocoon. And what happens to the people as they watch this? Especially the Jewish leaders who saw this miracle with their own eyes. For them it was the last straw. It says that after they saw Lazarus alive again, they went and had a secret meeting and they said in John eleven fifty three, from that day on, they made plans to put Jesus to death. Things are in motion now that in a few weeks will move to Good Friday and the crucifixion of Christ. And it's in that context, after this event and after the Jewish determination to kill Jesus, that there is a dinner that's thrown in Jesus' honor. That's the context. Now, let's talk about the cost. Remember in John 12, 3, it said, Mary took a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume, and poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair, and the whole house was filled with the fragrance of that perfume. Well, did you hear how much that ointment cost? A little later, Judas said that that perfume could be sold for, you ready? A year's wages. That's a lot of money, isn't it? A whole year's worth of money, all in that one little jar of perfume. Imagine dropping income just like that. Bam! Well, what's it all about? See, Mary is showing us what it looks like to replace get with give. She's showing us what it looks like to give everything for someone and something that meant everything to her. So the context was death for Jesus. The cost was everything that Mary had. And then there's also a comparison that happens in our text. A comparison between Mary and Judas. Mary is extravagant. Mary is excessive. Mary's gone way over the top. And Judas? Remember it said Judas, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. And then I love how John gives us the real reason. He didn't say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief and keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself what was put into it. Do you see, after witnessing Mary's extravagant example of giving over getting, giving everything, in light of that, Judas is threatened. His whole world comes crashing down, all because Mary lives by one little word that he could not understand, give. The comparison couldn't be more black and white. Mary is a generous disciple. Judas is a greedy disciple. Mary gives with abandon. Judas is miserly to a T. Mary sacrifices financially. Judas won't even give a nickel. Mary shows her faith by her actions. Judas talks a good game about giving money to the poor, but he doesn't mean it. Mary loves the word give, but all Judas can do is get. Get more, get ahead, get on top. 
And that get attitude, he's eventually going to kill him. And all of this, the context, the cost, and the comparison, right, all that we've talked about leads to the cross. Remember what Jesus said? Leave her alone. It is intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. The day of my burial, Jesus said. He knew that Mary understands the cross. He knew Mary believed the words from John 129, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the, way, the sin of the world. He knew Mary believed the words of John 2, Destroy this temple, in three days I will raise it up. He knew Mary believed and trusted in the words from John 3, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so much the Son of Man be lifted up. And Mary, because she understood what Jesus would do for her on the cross, gives everything she has. It's worth it for her to give. And in doing so, she prepares Jesus to give everything he has. And the room is filled with the smell of costly perfume. Wouldn't you love to have been there? Smells are just powerful things, aren't they? The smell of a rose catches your nose. Suddenly, you, you remember your first date in high school. Maybe, or maybe not. Or maybe it's the scent of your grandmother's perfume and, and memories just come flooding back. It's weird, isn't it? While, while words go to the thinking part of our brain, smell goes to the emotional part of us, doesn't it? And that's why a whiff of grandma's perfume brings back our emotions for grandma. And I think that must have been true for Jesus too. Don't you just think that Mary's strong perfume lingered with Jesus throughout all of Holy Week as he makes his way to the cross? Maybe even on Good Friday, the fragrance of Mary's perfume lingers. And then perhaps, just perhaps, when Jesus gives himself completely, all of his love and mercy and grace, holding nothing back for us, he might have still faintly smelled the sweet fragrance of Mary's gift. A reminder that Mary had marked him with one word, give. I don't think it's surprising that both Matthew and Mark say, Wherever this story is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. And why is that? Because the kingdom of God isn't about hoarding and stockpiling. The kingdom of God isn't about being chintzy and cheap. The kingdom of God is not about get. Get will kill us. But always and forevermore, God's kingdom is about one word, Give. And when we do, what happens? Tokimeku. Sparks of joy. That's why it says in Acts, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And so Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus, shows us that the kingdom of God is about giving lavishly, giving generously, giving joyfully, giving completely. And we're not just talking money here. We're talking our lives. We're talking about serving and loving one another. We give to one another. And whenever this gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Jesus never says that about anybody else except this woman. So thanks to Mary, we can boil down life as a child of God to one simple word, one powerful and life-changing word. Try it out sometime. It will change everything. It will create sparks of joy. And what's the word? You know it. G-I-V-E. Give. Give like Jesus gave for you. Amen. Amen. Well, let's move now as we sing the next song, Behold the Lamb of God. It's on page 14 and 15 in the back of your worship folder if you want to follow along. And as we do that, we think about the offerings that we give to God, that we give to God so that we can experience that tokimeku and so that we can be used by God to do great things in the kingdom.
you're able, would you stand as we thank God for the offerings we brought to him today. Loving Father, we rejoice in the great gift of your Son and pray that you may find joy in the gifts that we bring. Help us to give of ourselves more freely and fully to you and to each other, trusting in your love to provide for our every need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, friends, let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord Jesus Christ, by your death on the cross, you forgive the sins of all people. Help us to have compassion on others and reflect your generous love to them. For all people are created in your image. On our hearts imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace. Loving Lord, give us the strength to forgive others as you have forgiven us. On our hearts imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace. Loving Lord, embolden us to be generous with all the good gifts you have given us. Prevent us from any greed or dishonesty that would harm others and be a poor reflection upon you. On our hearts imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace. Loving Lord, instill in us a love for the poor that is not rooted in our superiority over them, or in some vain hope of making ourselves feel better. Rather, teach us how to love in true humility and service. On our hearts imprint your image, blessed Jesus, King of grace. Loving Lord, we pray for the leaders of this nation and of all the nations throughout the world, that your wisdom would be upon them for the health and welfare of all people. On our hearts, imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace. Loving Lord, we pray for all Christians throughout the world. As we all follow you on whatever journeys you send us, remind us that we are united with you and with all who follow you by baptism into your death and resurrection. On our hearts, imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace. Loving Lord, draw near to all those who are sick, injured, and recovering. Give them your healing and patience. On our hearts, imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace. Loving Lord, send comfort and hope to all those who grieve the loss of a loved one. Grant that the power of your resurrection to eternal life shines through the darkness of grief. On our hearts, imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace. Almighty God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, now remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now as you go out into the world to give as Jesus first gave to you, the blessing of Almighty God, the Father who saw mankind's hopeless condition, the Son who showed the depth of God's love, 
and the Holy Spirit, who opened our eyes of faith in Christ, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn this evening is titled, Where Charity and Love Prevail. This is found in the service book, 845.